All right, functional groups. So what's the meaning of functional groups? So functional group is a part of the molecule which is responsible or which takes part in the reactions. Right? So any time of chemical reaction happens, it's most likely to happen on a functional group. Okay? So the working part of the molecule, that's the functional. All right? So we have different categories of functional groups. Okay? So I divided those functional groups into three different categories. Okay? Category one is the functional group which only contains carbon and carbon hydrogen. Okay? And category two is carbon bonded to nitrogen, oxygen, or halogen. Okay? So there's one more category, and we'll, we'll see that later. Okay? So category one is when you only have a carbon and carbon-hydrogen bonds. Right? So let's say we have a carbon-carbon double bond, let's say. All right? Or a carbon-carbon triple bond. All right? Or when you have a ring with double bonds like this. So when you have a carbon-carbon double bond, we call that as alkene functional group. Right? So carbon-carbon double bond is alkene functional group. Triple bond is alkyne. And when you have a six-carbon ring okay, with alternate double bond, so we have double, single, double, double, single, double, double, single, double. Okay, so alternate double, single, double, we call that as aromatic wing. So we only have three functional groups in this category, which is alkene, alkyne, and aromatic ring. Okay. So let's see, in the second category, we have carbon bonded with oxygen and nitrogen, right? So let's say we have carbon bonded with OH, right? So carbon bonded with oxygen, and oxygen should have two bonds. So on the other side, you have a hydrogen. And this functional group is alcohol. Or hydroxy group. Sometimes you also see as hydroxy group. Now, anytime you see a hydrogen, that can be potentially replaced with a carbon, right? So if I replace that hydrogen with a carbon, right, that will become an ether. So alcohols and ether, okay, you can just replace a hydrogen with a carbon, that will become and ether. All right. <clears throat> then we have <clears throat> carbon can be bonded with nitrogen, and nitrogen should have three bonds. So let's say if you have carbon bonded with an NH2, then that is your primary amine. We call that as primary amine. Okay. Now, whenever you see a hydrogen, that can be potentially replaced with a carbon. So what I can do is I can replace one hydrogen with a carbon, okay, one at a time, and that will become a secondary amine. And if I replace all the hydrogens with a carbon, right? So now I replace both the hydrogens with a carbon, that becomes a tertiary amine. So primary, secondary, and tertiary amine. Okay, so make sure you try to understand these because this can be a little bit confusing. All right. Uh, <clears throat> we can also have carbon bonded with sulfur. Okay, the sulfur should have uh, the second bond, which is a hydrogen, and that is called as a thiol group. Okay, and then when you have the hydrogen that can be replaced with a carbon, that becomes a sulfide. And the last one, when you have a carbon with a halogen, okay? So X can be chlorine, fluorine, chlorine, bromine, and iodine, and this is called as alkyl halide. All right, <clears throat> so we have the two charts now, one with just a carbon, carbon bond, and carbon hydrogen, nothing else. And the second chart with carbon with oxygen, right? Carbon with sulfur, halogen, or nitrogen, right? So you can add also sulfur in this case. All right. So carbon bonded with nitrogen can have three different categories: primary, secondary, and tertiary. Okay. Now this is something what you actually have to memorize. 
Um, <clears throat> I actually prepared a chart for you with all the functional groups on one page, and I will post it on along with this video so you can print it out and you can you can look at it. <clears throat> okay, where you have all the functional groups at the at, at one page. All right. So the third category is the functional groups with a carbon oxygen double bond. So let's see third category here. So the third category is that contains carbon oxygen double bond. All right. So what kind of different functional groups we can have with this? Right. So let's start with the, having carbon. Then you have the CO. Okay. So we can compare the exact same way as the previous um, previous category, where you have the OH. All right. So in this case. OH is connected to a carbon oxygen double bond. Okay. So this becomes a carboxylic acid. So carboxylic acid. Right. <clears throat> and when you have a hydrogen that can be potentially replaced by a carbon. So if I replace that hydrogen with a carbon, that, that becomes an ester. So carboxylic acid changes to an ester. So replace that carbon with a hydrogen. All right. Now we have <clears throat> similar category. What you see here, primary, secondary, and tertiary amine. We also have the same functional groups here. Okay. So we have NH2. Right. Then the second one is if I replace that hydrogen with a carbon. And I can replace all the hardens with a carbon. Right. So we have NH2, two hardens. I replace one of the hardens with a carbon. And then in the third type, I replace both the hardens with two carbons. In this case, this becomes primary amide. That's your primary amide. That will be secondary amide. And that will be your tertiary amide. Okay, so in, in all the functional groups, all I can tell you is these three are the confusing ones. Okay? Because you have NH2 here and you also have NH2 here. Okay? So what you're looking at basically is the moment you see a carbon oxygen double bond in your group, then you categorize it this way. If there is no carbon oxygen double bond, then you categorize this way. Okay, that's why I say there are two general categories you're looking at. Is either you have the carbon oxygen double bond or not. Okay. And there are a couple of more in this category here. And I'm just gonna go ahead and write down in this corner here. So you can have with the hydrogen directly attached to the carbon oxygen double bond, and you can have that carbon hydrogen replaced by a carbon. Every time you have a hydrogen, that can be potentially replaced with a carbon. So this becomes aldehyde. Okay, and this is your ketone. <clears throat> so aldehyde and ketone. And the last one is when you have a halogen attached to it, and that is acyl halide. Same as alkyl halide, this is acyl halide. All right, so how do you memorize these? Okay, if you know one, you can easily identify the other one, right? So if you're looking at OH as a carboxylic acid, then if I replace that hydrogen with a carbon, that becomes an ester. So they go hand in hand, all right? If I know what is primary amide, then I'm just looking at how many hydrogens I have on the nitrogen here. Okay, so one carbon, one hydrogen, or no hydrogens. Okay, so two hydrogens is primary, no hydrogens is tertiary. Okay, and then you have a hydrogen directly attached to the double bond carbon, oxygen, or a carbon. So aldehyde, if I know aldehyde, then I can make a ketone easily out of that. 
and then you have the SL halide. Okay. So now we have three, <coughs> three charts, right? So chart number one is when you have just a carbon, carbon single bond, or sorry, carbon or carbon hydrogen. Okay. Chart two was when you have the carbon attached to a nitrogen, oxygen, sulfur, or halogen. And chart three is when you have all the functional groups with carbon oxygen double bond. All right. Now, <clears throat> once you know all these functional groups, okay, how do you identify? What kind of questions can be asked on this? Let's let's get into that part now. Okay. So now I know all these functional groups. How can we apply this into the actual examples? All right. So what we do now is we actually I will draw a structure and then we'll try to identify all types of functional groups present in that structure. All right. So let's say we have a structure like this. So this is a complex structure, and we are trying to identify what kind of functional groups are present in this structure. Okay? Again, when you see a structure like this, okay, you're not looking at the whole molecule, but you're looking at only one part of the molecule, and then try to identify that functional group. All right? So let's look at the easier ones first. Right? So you have a carbon-carbon double bond. So I'm only looking at this part right here. And a carbon-carbon double bond, if you look at your chart, then that is? an alkene functional group. All right. So you put an arrow and write down alkene on that functional group. Right? What's the other one, easier one here is NH2. Right? So I can have NH2 two different ways. I can have NH2 bonded to a carbon or NH2 bonded to a carbon oxygen double bond. All right. So which situation I have? I have NH2 bonded to just a single carbon right there. So that should not be amide. Instead, that is your primary amine. Okay, because bonded to just a simple carbon. Right? <clears throat> then we have a carbon bonded to an oxygen. Right? So oxygen has a carbon and a carbon on each side. Okay? So that is your ether. because we don't have a carbon oxygen double bond here. So that will be your ether functional group, right? Now, these are the two ones, they belong to this category here, okay? So let's, let's go with one at a time, right? So what I have here, I have a carbon oxygen double bond, okay? So I have a carbon oxygen double bond, okay? That means it belongs to this category right here. And then I have an oxygen attached to it, right? So CO attached to an oxygen. The CO attached to an oxygen, we only have these two. Okay, so CO attached to an oxygen and CO attached to an oxygen. We only have these two. And then if you have a hydrogen further, then that becomes carboxylic acid. Or if it's a carbon, which that's what we have, that the oxygen is further attached to a carbon, that means this is an ester. All right. Now, if you look at here, then we have a carbon oxygen double bond, that is CO. So we have a CO attached to a nitrogen. Okay, so CO attached to a nitrogen. So what kind of nitrogen do you have? How many hydrogens we see here? We only see one hydrogen and one carbon. Right? So one hydrogen and one carbon, that becomes a secondary amide. Okay, so that's how you identify all the functional groups in a molecule. Okay, so in your exam, you will have something similar to this. You might have a complex structure. By the way, this, is, this structure is Tamiflu. That's the flu drug. Okay, so that's the structure of Tamiflu. Right. <clears throat> so that's how you identify all the functional groups present in a molecule. Again, anytime you see a structure, maybe this structure are bigger than this, maybe a complex structure, okay, what you're looking at is only a little part of the molecule. Okay, we're not looking at the whole picture. Okay, just divide into different different sections and try to identify what kind of functional groups we have in that section.